Well, dang it guys, not the best way to start a project, but something like this was bound to happen. Looks like we've spotted ourselves a bad apple. Holy corrosion, she is spewing from just about every point she can, even places that aren't electrical. It just goes to show that there is ground going through this metal bracket right here. And look at this post. That is a nightmare right there. You wouldn't have known it either from this little cap covering everything. That's why you really gotta check your connection, guys. And there's a great reason why corrosion can de decrease your voltage by sometimes two volts or more. 10.7 volts, holy shit. And that's just because of the corrosion, guys. If this was cleaned up and everything was just like this top post, it would be 12.3 right now. But that's just a great example of why you need to clean off your post because you can have bad connections like this, 10.7 volts. There's no reason why this battery should be like this. So we're gonna go to the store and replace it. And actually I can save myself some money when we go down to the store today, let them do a direct swap down at, I think, Advanced Auto Parts. I can save myself 22 bucks. So I'm gonna go down there right now, give them this old piece of shit battery and get ourselves a nice freshie. Now don't be surprised if you see some pretty hellacious uh, corrosion on those terminals. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty insane. You guys do a lot of these battery installations for peeps? Yes sir. There you go. <laughs> That's like, that looks like an accident. <laughs> See, AutoZone's right across the dang street. They giving you guys a run for your money? Yeah, all right. You can still come over here. Man, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> and just like that, bam. Nothing like saving some time, some money, and making a new friend. <laughs> Alright, so we're back here in the garage. We've done a couple things, including disconnecting the wires for our stock battery terminals. As you can see, holy shit, they had seen their day all corroded, looking nasty on the underside of it. Never would have known that, huh? So here's our freshy silver. Uh, we're going to be putting these in, making the battery look a little bit nicer. Even though the lady was nice enough to do it for us at the store, we had every bit of intentions of coming home and doing this and making it look better uh, anyway. So let's go ahead and clean up the connections we took the one bolt off here so our new one will fit absolutely perfectly it's almost the same style when you think of it we're gonna be leaving the stock alternator installed all of our upgrades are gonna be in the back and then judging by our voltage drop then we can decide whether or not we want to chuck in a high output alternator Looks like we're encountering that ever so annoying problem when your terminal or your post doesn't fit on your ring terminal, whether it be the lug or the bolt is just too big or too small to fit onto it. It's kind of annoying, so sometimes you need to take a drill and make the opening just a little bit bigger. So that's what we're gonna do, but there's a little trick to it. I'm gonna set my uh, drill to reverse so it doesn't grab the ring terminal itself and reef on the wires or, or make me go for a ride myself. So that's kind of a, a trick little there. If you can if you can puncture through the material in reverse, if it's really thin, I've done it uh, countless times and it's worked out for me. Just finished drilling through it. Not bad if you ask me. It'll fit right onto that post nice and easily now. Notice how it's looking a little bit different in here? I just had to change up those terminals. They were bothering me a little bit, even though they're nice name brand units. You know, I just wanted to keep it nice and matching uh, both the same style of terminal. Now I think it looks a little bit better and it's matching. So now we can go ahead and focus our attention on something else. For instance, we could at least plan out some wiring here with our spare bin of life. We got some prospects in here. I think we got some definite prospects. So let's go ahead and pull out our longest pieces, see what we can do for recycling. Holy crap, guys. 
I think we just did that first try. Pulled out the biggest piece, good old NVX silver tin. Why not? This stuff has done me well ever since we first got it when my dad blow through. That was a fun project. What is that, 4,704 strands? Ah, we'll probably stick the 3,000 watt amplifier in there from NVX. Gotta give her at least a little bit of power, a little bit of overhead, you know what I'm saying, to do some burps for us. Check it out guys, just went around and did a little bit of cleaning on these plastic pieces and I'd say it looks a heck of a lot cleaner under here. It's crazy what just a little bit of dust will do as far as making things look messy. But here we go, a nice relatively clean engine bay. Time to run this bad boy through underneath the car. I don't care what anyone says, I prefer running all my zero gauge wiring underneath the car. That way if anything does happen, the hot filament is on the outside of the vehicle instead of the inside where all the flammable interior panels and shit like that are. To make things a little bit easier, I'm gonna jack up the front of the car so I can go underneath it and start zip tying the wire to the back. Just enough room for me to get underneath, do what I need to do, just for good measure. You can see our wire is kind of dangling right down there, but we're gonna be pulling it up this way and trying to follow these lines right here. And we may even use them to uh, get a little bit of security along the way with some zip ties because they're pretty damn sturdy. And there's a little grommet at the end. We're gonna run all the way down the whole length of the car and then going towards the trunk, there's actually a stock grommet right here, just underneath this stock deadening. There's a little bit of a grommet we're gonna utilize and then we're gonna ground just to the front of it because if you look underneath the car, the bolts go into the frame are the same ones that are going to the seats. And to do all the securing, we have these 250 pound zip ties that hold up their strength up to negative 100 degrees. These things are really big. Look at the size of my thumbnail compared to the end of the zip tie. To get this wire fished all the way back, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. So um, I got it actually pinned into a little spot here so, so I can pull it from the front and I can just get every bit of slack that I need for the, let's just say 16 foot run that we're about to do to the back. Maybe a little bit more, 17, 18 feet, but I'm just pulling up all the slack until I see it just about to the top of the battery up there. And I, you see how I have this uh, uh, tech flex? That's to let me know that I'm into the firewall stuff. So just now I'm beyond the firewall, I can stop pulling. And uh, we, it's just a matter of tucking this stuff right up under here, just like this, doing some zip ties, and it will essentially be hidden along the rails here, all the way to the trunk. And just like that, our 250 pound zip ties are holding up our zero cage all the way up to the front, nice and neatly tucked away, and it is above the lowest point of the car, so if you hit a bump, there's not gonna be any sparks of flying. The opening to our trunk is right here beyond this little wire, so I'm gonna tuck in my zero gauge nice and safely through the wire, but firstly, I need to poke a hole in the grommet that's on the other side. You can see it poking through right there, but I'm just gonna poke this wire through the grommet so it'll be nice and sealed from the weather. All right, and there she is, all finished up. Pushed her in nice and neatly, and we'll be able to fuse her up right to our amplifier once we get the piece that belongs in the trunk back in there, of course. I also added just a little zip tie on this end to make sure that it can't go through this side. That takes care of the main power wire going to supply voltage to our amplifier up back. Next up is the ground wire for the amplifier up back. We're gonna keep it simple like I already mentioned. We got a whole bunch of spare wire in here, but we're just gonna find a piece that works best. Some more NVX zero gauge. Hey, that's actually pretty convenient. We're gonna be able to mount the hardware on the other side. So I'm gonna scratch down this surface right here so it's down to really nice bare metal. And then that'll be going into the strongest part of the car on the other end. And if you can truly really see, there is a lot of meat in there. It's just hard to focus in. Oh, there it is. There's a lot of meat in there. It's probably the most in the whole vehicle. So this is the easiest and the safest ground that we can get without drilling and modifying uh, my girlfriend's car. And just for a little extra protection down on this connection, we're gonna use some dielectric grease. Keep this thing nice and lubed up to keep the oxidation off her as best as we can. Yeah, everything's still looking good up here. Got our battery charging and our cable coming in from the back is right here. We're gonna have our fuse 
probably somewhere right around here so we can link up to our positive terminal just like this. We're gonna put probably a 300 amp ANL fuse in there for our 3000 watt amplifier. It'll be something just like this. I don't know, we'll figure out a place to put it so we can plug that in. Just lightly zip tied it onto the corner of these plastic pieces. She's secure enough just to get our wires ran to our battery. This isn't holding any weight. So bam, bam, thank you bam, bam, bam. Look at that. Get a little fucking six inch piece and go to our battery. We have got the remote wires ran up on its own little switch. I already have a video on that, so I didn't want to spend too much attention on that. Power, ground, RCA, everything is looking good, guys. So let's hop inside. You know what time it is. Go get the fucking subwoofer box. Slam it in. Fitting nice in there. At least a good, I don't know, 10 inches of breathing room on the left going up towards the front so it sounds nice and pressurized up in the cabin. Everything is nice and good as far as clearance on the top. I'll probably put the amplifier either up here or right here. Do some like solid, uh, I don't know, maybe some anti-vibration steps just to keep the vibration down a little bit. But one sub isn't gonna kill an amplifier, especially since we built the box pretty stout. So, what do you think, guys? She's fucking in there. Now let's just go ahead and get the amplifier. We've already done all the hard work. It's just gonna be plug and play at this point. We got the amplifier offset with a little bit of rubber uh, standoffs there. We got the wire all kind of just uh, thrown together a little bit, just something really temporary. Well, not temporary. We're gonna go ahead and zip tie it up and put some uh, something right here to keep the battery from moving. Good old excess power there. NVX, freaking let's get this dropping hertz bumping, guys. Everything's all wired up. bass can make everything sound like For sure. sound a little bit better huh yeah I've been, ex I've been excited to, to hear everything sometimes I get pretty tired on the drive and I'm kind of doing some of some of these and like slapping myself in the face the bass helps are you shitting me you can probably see that RCA dangling right there we still need to uh, touch this thing up a little bit but we're gonna be twisting this thing all about once we start testing <laughs> Yeah, I should get a reading on, that's what, that's 35 hertz, that's, I mean, that's getting into the lower frequencies for sure, but not really crazy low. 
My battery is definitely about to die here, so we're gonna try to squeeze in something. Gotta grab my phone and connect the SSA meter. We have it up here, sealed up on the dash. We're gonna roll up our windows and everything. Man, we're killing these door speakers. Let's just turn it up real quick. Awesome. awesome. The sweet stock stock alternator 140 single sub. That's exactly what I wanted out of this thing. Our alternator charge is so low. Look at this guys. 13 and a half volts. We're dropping voltage here. I don't know why something happened here, so we won't be able to get the uh, wattage test. So we're dropping to 12.2 volts and we're rebounding to 13.3. So yeah, I definitely think we could benefit from a high output alternator, even the car itself. Ooh, whoops, I'm knocking my whole station over here. So freaking happy. Elise gets to drive all around town, bumping bass. You know, that's that. You know, that's a pretty nice, you know, average number for us for a single 12. You know, I would say for something not geared towards SPL, just a nice little flower port for the missus. There she goes, looking beautiful in her fucking Corolla there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, this is uh, EXO signing out with Elise here. Good old Corolla install at the secret spot. I'll stay on the lookout for much, much more. All right, let me clean up this joint. Until the next time. Wakaa!